The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. All right, mm, you know, I like doing these things. All right, hello everyone, welcome here. Let's get everything started and we'll start here in a few minutes. Woo! TripAdvisor. I want to go on a trip with TripAdvisor. Attendees, hello. If the sound is good and the screen is good, let me know. This is will be recorded if you have to leave. I do have some emails I need to get to. Um, so if you have emailed me, I've been in uh, Anna Marie Island and... I, uh, I need to get back to some of the emails, I know. My bad. Anna Maria Island. So a few names came out. Trip is up a gazillion dollars post-market, 46.75. Wow. Monster down, Twilio up, Match.com, my favorite is up. It's only up about a buck fifty though, nothing really outrageous. Um... What else do we have? Planet Fitness went down. E pre or post market A A O I. It used to be one of the best names ever to trade. Now it's just no good. Down after hours. Uh, Twilio is up up about two bucks. And uh, Cena comes out. They're not out yet, are they? No. WB is up. LBTYA is, I can't tell, and then Wendy's is down, and Etsy is down a little bit. Some of the big names reported today. VRX was fun. I was in SeaWorld calls. I actually went to Adventure Island in the afternoon, which is owned by SeaWorld. SeaWorld actually, after that morning pop, really sold off hard. Ew. Um, and the futures here are about flat as we go into Tuesday and Q is down too. So is it eight o'clock? It is eight Oh one. Good. If the, well, Lance, I should probably get the, uh, chat box here. That would be helpful. So I could see everyone. All right. Hello, Simon, Kenneth, Wayne. Good to see you folks. Oh, what do I do with the chat box? Ah, I had the wrong one. I had the attendee box. Okay. So I see some people coming in. Um, I guess we shall start and when more people come in, we'll just go from there. I did anyway. I hope the email reminder went out. Because I was trying to mess with it. Hopefully I didn't screw it up. All right, so let's get started here. I am Lance Apolito. You can email me, lance at alphashark.com. Again, I'm kind of backed up. Uh, I'll get back to everyone probably tomorrow before lunchtime. Uh, I've been playing hooky going to the beach some days. Uh, <laughs> you, if you don't follow me on Twitter, here's my Twitter. It is simply twitter.com, L-A-N-C-E-I-P-P-O-L-I-T-O. You could see, uh, I don't know why I have this pinned tweet here still. It's a little old, but all these names have actually done pretty well. Uh, you know, I, I make it entertaining uh, on my public Twitter. I also have a private Twitter, which is more trading. But, you know, like today, here's me at Adventure Island drinking a pineapple. Who in the heck knows what it was drink? But, you know, I do talk about, you know, stuff in the options market, trades, uh, you know, stuff like that, too. News, stuff like that. Of course, my ponytail. You know, what, what would I be without it? 
so I, I threw you throw some entertainment in there. Well, yeah, I do a lot of fishing and uh, outdoor stuff too. And mostly, again, uh, I, I want this uh, this webinar to be more of a conversation. So if you have questions or you know anything from trading, what's going on in the market, to maybe you know Lance, how'd you get your chart like that, or you know anything like that, feel free. If it's very specific, of course, shoot me an email. But a little bit about me, and I'll get into that right coming up after this risk disclaimer. Day trading, short term trading, options trading, and futures trading are. Are extremely risky undertakings. They're generally not appropriate for someone limited capital or no trading experience or low tolerance for risk. Never execute a trade unless you can afford it. Prepare to lose your entire investment. All trading operations involve serious risk and lose your entire investment. No trades or recommendations or advice can be received for lost capital. All trades are educational purposes only. Contact your broker, uh, RIA for execution margin and other capital requirements. Everyone watching the presentation here is to all the screens. Option Hacker at home, optionhacker.com, Lance Blito. So, a little bit about me and how I trade and, and you know, kind of the whole game plan of it is I started off as a research analyst, worked for Citigroup, uh, worked in a commodities fund and also a hedge fund. And I've, I've done some media work. I really don't care for it, though, because, A, I'm usually never home, uh, I'm usually out if I'm not trading, fishing or at the beach. And currently you can find me at Alpha Shark at 1230 p.m. Eastern time till 2 p.m. Eastern time. So I like trading options, as you could probably see from the uh, Ponytail Brothers right here. Uh, I, I like unusual option activity. I call this the little pony pump at the halftime report because I like to uh, sneak in trades and try to get in before uh, they do. And uh, I, I love certain stocks. I love odd stocks like Weight Watchers, VRX, Match.com, Etsy, Snap, First Solar. I like the weird. If the weirder, the better to me. Um, I want stocks that no one else trades. That's my whole thing. Everyone trades, you know, Baba and Apple and Facebook and Netflix and the big funds and institutions trade them. But I feel like I really don't have much advantage in trading them. And I do in these names because a, they usually have a high short interest who in the world likes, you know, uh, VRX today. Everyone thought it was going to go down. Who in the heck likes TripAdvisor, you know, but the stocks up to the, you know, to the moon right here. I try to find opportunities and trade off of it um, to make money. That's kind of my whole game plan. Uh, I am not a crypto expert at all. I was on a show about it literally about 10 days before the Bitcoin uh, top. And that's when you know something was in a bubble. But it, it is, uh, I always laugh at this because here I am, a so-called crypto expert when really I, uh, you know, I couldn't even tell you the difference between Litecoin and Ethereum, but apparently I was an expert. That's all desperate some people were to get uh, coin knowledge. But hey, when in Rome, right? So the webinar, I want to be more of a conversation rather than me just reading out slides, especially too. I want it to be more relevant so you can actually go and use this information for tomorrow, you know, and later in the week. Like really, I I, I could care less about uh, me saying, hey. When price crosses moving average A, buy. When it crosses B, sell. I mean, who cares? What if we gap down 20 handles tomorrow and the markets, you know, bear market begins? You know, that won't be that useful. Uh, remind me to do some trivia and I'll give away some free courses at Alpha Shark. I should actually set a reminder here. Let me show you how I set reminders. Set a reminder for 30 minutes to do trivia. And then the good old phone reminds me. Thank you, Siri. And I may even throw some questions during the webinar. You know, usually my questions are either sports, uh, uh, wrestling, or Pawn Star, uh, or The Office trivia. You know, I, I keep it very basic. Again, I really don't do much but trade and fish. So education. So you're here because you want to learn about trading and the markets and how to improve your trading, right? I mean, that's why everyone should be here. I mean, I even go to the to the trading room in the morning when uh, Andrew or Mike are on because I want to know what they think. So I'm always open to new things and open, uh, you know, again, to new uh, to new uh, information. And in college, you know, if you're young, usually when you take up finance or business school, you learn about the bond market and free cash flow and stuff like that. Eh, and great. Right. But you really don't learn too much about trading. Maybe you learn what a call option is or a put option is. 
I began trading the S&P futures. And then really over the past uh, few years, I moved on into the option market. And in 2017, besides paying a crap load in commissions, I felt like I had to be glued to my PC all day. Um, and every five minute bar had not only price, but it had emotion in it. So if you have a five minute red bar and you're long, you know, you want to sell. You have a five minute bar and it's green. Maybe you want to sell some or, or scale out. You know, I stopped looking at the big picture, right? Like if I'm long a position, why am I long it? What's the price target? You know, why am I in? Uh, and what's my goal in each trade? Yeah, usually animals, especially cats. My uh, my kitty had five, four kittens three weeks ago. So usually uh, my Twitter is all cat cat stuff too. So I started looking at larger time frames, even from intraday, you know, going from the five to the 15, sometimes even the 30 or the hourly. And I stopped, you know, taking all all these noise and, and lines and stuff off my charts. I said, Lance, who the heck cares? All you really need is volume, uh, you know, maybe a moving average or so, or just an uh, overall trend study. And that's it. You know, you don't need a million things just to, to uh, you know, stare at all day. I mean, really, on my, on my, one of my machines over here, I have uh, six, nine charts up a watch list and a scanner and everything. I mean, you think I want to have freaking five different moving averages and stuff on them where I can't even see the candles? No, I, I eliminate a lot of cluster and, and, uh, and trading. So I, I trade my own money. Uh, you know, I, I don't get funded. It's not fake. I don't trade penny stocks to where I leverage, you know, 50 to one margin or anything. Uh, you know, I lost, I, I lost money trading, uh, was it Friday? Actually, no, I didn't. Uh, this was the other Friday I did. Yeah, I, I know every day I'm not going to make money in the markets, right? Every trade is not a winner. In fact, look, you know, th to keep the transparency up, if I go to trade or analyze or monitor, sorry, monitor, if I look at my account statement and I go down here, I see I lost Snap, again, $272. Roku, $255. You know, guess what all these trades from here to here are? They are losers right here, losers, loser lands right here. And then all these trades up here are winners. So the goal in trading is to have small losers and big winners. So I always, you know, say, you know, I love small losers. I love them. If I have losers, I want them to be small. I love small losers. And my winners, if I look here, if we could get Epic pin out. I guess we can't. Never mind. Thanks, Start Menu. You know, my winners are big. Shake Shack, 965, eBay, 898, Valet, 571, KKR, 555, MRO, 460, Yum China, 360, AZN, 360, Unit, 270. So I have big winners, small losers. Most of my losers, I realize, are from $50 to about $170 or so. And a lot of these are just earnings, to be honest. You know, either that or weekly options. So I kind of know, hey, if you trade weekly options, you have a high probability of a loser. If you trade earnings, pretty much it's going to be a coin flip, right? So I, I understand that. You know, when I look at my account statement and everything, I want small losers. And that is something that, you know, is real, right? Every trade is not going to be a winner. Remember that. Uh, you have to go in and risk the certain amount you're willing to lose. Most of my trades that I put on for earnings or weekly options, I'll tr usually put 150 to 200 bucks. And if they go to zero, I accept it. But if they go up like an eBay did, I know I can make a big return or a big bang for my buck. So right now, what has happened? And maybe you have this. I always say people usually have uh, a couple different kinds of accounts or they have it all you know, in one account or they separate their uh, money or their goals and strategies into different accounts. Usually people have their big account, we call it, or their retirement account, which is stocks that they hold and they don't do much with. Then people have a trading account that they trade usually, you know, stocks or options and maybe futures with. And then some people like myself, what happened is now I have a little itty bitty account. So I took out, you know, a lot of money for a down payment on a house. And I got stuck with about 5K in an account. 
So my 5K, it's not it's not all the money I have, but it's five thousand dollars that I put for trading. And my goal in the account was to double it. You know, so I understand I'm going to have probably more risk in that account because the five thousand bucks doesn't necessarily have you know so much emotion tied up to it. You know, if I lost all five thousand dollars, I won't be you know crying to bed every night. But if I had a hundred thousand account and I lost you know eighty thousand, I'd be crying every night to bed. So I don't have to risk, you know, in my 5,000 account, I don't have to risk all 5,000, like some of these penny stock guys that they risk their whole accounts on a trade and use all this leverage and margin. No, no, no. I could risk, a, you know, a small amount to potentially make a big amount of reward. And this all, uh, you know, again, this applies to yourself, lifestyle, risk tolerance, account size, because all this should be uh, into your trading. You know, you should, you should take in hey, what is my account? What is my risk? What is my lifestyle? You know, do I have to be glued to the to the computer all day? If I'm trading futures, do I put a stop in? Do I trade one contract? If I'm trading options on a small account, am I going to trade, you know, 10 contracts? Am I going to, you know, risk the whole account because if it goes bad, then what? I, I, I don't do that. My goal every night is to go to bed without thinking about the darn market. I got too many gray hair. At, uh, uh, at, you know, in a few days, I'll be 30 years old. I don't want any more gray hair or wrinkles, right? I already look like I'm in my 40s, I feel like. So your small account versus your large account. It's easier to double a small account than a large account. It is because usually the small accounts, you don't have as much, uh, uh, you, you're not tied up so much in the emotion as your large account. And usually your large account, you have less risk. Reasons is your, your large account or let's say 401k, something you may use, or maybe it's an income account, your risk tolerance is lower. Therefore, you're not going to go crazy trading weekly options, right? Like today, let's say you trade weekly options in a, a, a crude oil name, and then boom, crude oil goes down, boom, now you're lost with a big loss, and the options go to nearly zero, and you're freaking out, right? And your big account, you know, you're not going to risk your whole account doing it. On your small account, let's say it goes down to 3,000 or so, you had a bad week, it's not going to crush my lifestyle. Right. I'm not going to you know, whine and cry every night and panic that I'm down money. Therefore, I could take more risk in that account. More risk can lead to higher returns, but also higher losses, too. You know, on my large account, if I lost 50 percent of the account value, I'd be devastated. Right. So I need to protect my risk. You know, big account. I want to be more conservative. My smaller account. Maybe I could trade a couple of weekly options in there. But I know from myself and you could go back to your account statement. You know, a lot of these trades, Snap, Roku, these were weekly options and an earnings play. Canadian Solar, Bed Bath & Beyond, weekly options. Costco, weekly option. Expedia, earnings. XLV, weekly options. Microsoft, weekly options. I know that, Lance, you should not trade weekly options. But at the same time, Shake Shack it was a weekly options earnings play. eBay, weekly options. KKR, earnings. Uh, SeaWorld, earnings. You know, so I also know at the same point of view, hey, some of these trades were just weekly options or earnings, but I have to balance out my risk. Am I making money doing it or if I'm not? And if I'm not, maybe I should start trading longer dated options, right? On my large, or is, yeah, so we get it. So patience. 99% of the time, you're not going to buy a stock and it goes directly to your target and you take it off and you make all the money in the world and you're great. If you're trading weekly options, you have something we call theta decay, and the clock is ticking against you. So there's a little bit of there's a little bit of panic. The roughest part of trading is patience, because we have to sit on our hands and wait. What is the greater good? I always say, and if for a prime example is this, I was in TripAdvisor for about a week. Am I in TripAdvisor now? No, I'm not. So I was in TripAdvisor. I believe I had the 40 calls in May, and I believe I paid about a buck 40 for them. So I was in TripAdvisor. Uh, yeah, it must have been a few days ago. The stock was moving nowhere, had an up day, had a down day, had an up day. And on this up day here, actually it was on this, it was actually yesterday, yeah, because it was up about 4% and then it sold off. I closed out the options to for about two, 250. So from about 150 to, two, to 250. Great. Made a dollar on an option, can't complain. But if I would have held on to those May 40 calls from a buck 50 that went to 250, 
Now, TripAdvisor reported earnings and the stock's at 46.75. So those calls would have been up to probably seven or eight bucks. So I, I would have made nearly 800% on my money or so. Did I have patience? No. Would it have worked out perfectly as the stock's here? Actually, the stock is printing way up here now. It would have been fantastic. But that's the reason that patience pays. I didn't have patience, but I was still satisfied with turning a dollar fifty option into two fifty, right? I, I thought it was really good. Obviously, if I would have held on for a little bit longer, I'd be loving it. For scalpers, and it's what's difficult about this market is it's fun, right? You can you could do quick trades and bat away at profits. But for a small account, you also have to realize if you are scalping, scalping affects buying power, your commissions, you're paying a lot in commissions. And I usually know if I just day trade, I'm not going to make these big home run trades, right? Unless there's news on a stock after I buy it, which rarely that ever happens. When I swing trade a small account, it's a waiting game, right? There is, there, there could be news. It could be an earnings like TripAdvisor. It could be a technical breakout. You know, I have to wait for the trade to come, right? How many times do you wake up and a stock's up, you know, 10% and you say, ah, oh, if only I would have held it one more day. That's my trip advisor right now. But patience, it's a waiting game. If I follow options or I'm waiting on a stock to break out and it finally does, the question remains, what do I do? Right? Do I hold it? Do I take profits? Do I sell half the position? That is the hardest question in the world. What do I do? In the time period, especially for short dated options, a race against time. So, for example, I was in Shake Shack. Calls that expired. Oh my goodness, look at Shake Shack today. Wow. I was in Shake Shack calls that expired last Friday, so May 4th. I had the 50 strike calls for May 4th expiration while the stock was around 47 for earnings. I bought them for 55 cents and I sold some for 85 cents. I kept a couple on for earnings. The stock opened up and it went straight up to about 59 bucks. So those 50 calls, those 50 strike calls went to $9 from 55 cents. That is why you see my statement for Shake Shack here at 965, almost a thousand bucks. Good old Lance sold them at five dollars. So I sold them at five bucks. I sold um uh what did I sell? Two at five bucks? Yeah, two at five bucks. And so I turned fifty-five cents into five bucks, but if I would have held on, I could have sold them for nine bucks, right? But still huge move. It was part, you know, part of the reason why I had a couple calls left was because I wanted to uh, hold some calls in the earnings. Obviously, if I would have held on a little bit longer, it would have paid more. But that's the question is, what do I do? Right. And even something like VRX, VRX, the stock, if you look at it today. It moves here higher at the open, goes up. And what does it do? Ends the day down. So when do you sell? Do you sell here? Do you sell here? Do you sell here? You know, when? When do you get out of this position? If you look at the open, it had a nasty move lower too. So it, it, it becomes the, the point of uh, when do I get out of position? It is the hardest, one of the hardest things to do, and we can even look at like SeaWorld today, is when do you get out, right? Like SeaWorld, I got out of some calls here right at the open, way too early. They traded up to $1.50. I got out of buck 05 from 45 yesterday. But if I would have held on, I had seized the May 17 calls. If I would have held on, these calls went right back down to 45 cents. Right? So I would have got break even on the trade. So tracking options is very important. What I like to do if I trade options is I like to just pull up an options chain. Very simple to do. All you do, so like today in SeaWorld, I had SeaWorld calls into earnings. What I did was this. Whatever option I'm in, I like to do this. I like to go to my platform and copy the option. You could go to copy and it says seize the, the year, the month, the strike, and just copy it. And then go to my chart and pull it up like this. Get my blank chart and hit control V. Now my option is copied. So now I can see when are people selling their options. I could go to time and sales if I want to see as well, just like you do with stocks. 
when are people selling their option? So like, for, for example, this morning, I had SeaWorld options. People were selling them at the open right up here from 70 cents to 105. I got out at 105, but guess what? They got up to 170. If I didn't see the sell of some calls right here, so this trader right here sold 500 of them. I think they did it around a buck. Look at the stock, what happened right here at 955. There's 955, the stock went straight down. What happened to the calls? They never went up again. And they just faded, faded again. Right here, the trader sold 900 at 60. So you may be saying, this trader's an idiot. They could have sold them at 170, but they got out at 60, right? Look at the stock, how it faded lower. It's very hard. Even, the, even this trader who had 900 options or 500 options, they didn't even get out at the top. So I know I'm not going to get out perfectly, right? That's not realistic. But what I can do is track them. So if I see people selling them, I run away. If, the, if people are selling their options, I'm going to sell mine because I'm not smarter than these traders out here. I always say when I trade Apple or Facebook or Microsoft, I'm not smarter than these big funds who have the machines, the research, and everything else to move these stocks around. I simply don't. They trade millions of shares a day. I trade freaking 10 lots or 20 lots of options if I really want to get frisky with it or a couple hundred shares of stock. I'm not going to move these markets or I'm not going to outsmart the, the funds or the insiders or the people in the know. It's non-realistic, right? So all I am, I'm a small fish and playing with these big sharks out there. And all I do is try to follow what they're doing and make the best decision, make decision I can. So here it is. You control V it. You could copy it on any platform. Uh, you could look at it. So like eBay on this example, the 420, the May 2018th, 40 and a half calls. If you want to write down this, you can. Would be eBay, the year, 2018 or 18, 04 the month, 20 the date of expiration, C for call, and then the strike price. So that'd be April expiration, eBay, 40 and a half calls there. I'll wait for a second or so, so you can write this down if you want. But what all I do is I just put it up on my charts together. If I'm in an option, I'll just put it side by side. I even put time and sales here, so I even know. I have my volume shark indicator that lets me know the volume of uh, where they trade to if I need to. You know, I can see them time in sales. It's a very, very helpful tip that I like to use, especially when I'm trading options. Just like if you were using, you know, uh, time in sales or something when you're trading a stock. Get it? Any questions while we're about 25 minutes into the presentation on this? Chris, I see your question on scanning. We'll get to that for sure. That's a big part, too, to kind of fi find some of these odd names and uh, and see what's moving during the day. Yeah, I, I see everything. Sometimes you may have to repeat your questions if some of the other uh, chat box gets uh, clustered. But, you know, I usually see everything, even though my eyes burn really bad now from all this chlorine at Adventure Island. So we could copy options if just like we're trading the stock, see time and sales, see volume, because, again, you know, if you're trading an option two and there's no volume in it, what happens? Demand goes down, so therefore the option price goes down. Uh, Carrie, not a crypto class. I, I get into a little bit of cryptos and a little bit, but not uh, not specifically uh, on cryptos. Time and sales are dome trading, right? Some of you may trade futures or look at time and sales too, just like with the stock. You can also do that, too, on a dome. So on Thinkorswim, it's very simple. Other other platforms will be uh, very similar as well. If you don't get it or you haven't traded a dome, feel free to email me and I can help you or message me on Twitter. But all the dome is, it's just like when you use a dome for stock trading. You can do the same thing for option trading. Uh, Phil, really good question. How do you see the selling options? So what I can do this, just like I see the bid and ask size here. Let's actually put this down a little bit because I'm getting in the dome. There we go. Time and sales. So when I go to time and sales of the option, I like to do a couple things. I can see the option, right? Red, sell, green, buy under time and sales. I can also pull up a dome, you know, and put my orders in this way. So let's say I want to sell some here. 
on uh, SeaWorld. I could put them up here. I could see the dome move just like I would with a stock or a futures contract. You know, I, if I want to buy some options, I could see where the ass size is and put them in here too. But no, my number one thing is what I like to do. Actually, there's two things. Uh, number one, for everyone out there, they can go to down below time and sales and see. So I can go to time and sales and SeaWorld and I can see, you know, I, I, this, you know, does require some kind of, you know, knowledge. Like this trader sold May 16 calls 400 at the CBOE for $2. The market was 195 by 230. Chances are if they're doing 500 options, they're going to have to pay on the ass. So they're probably going to have to pay 225 or 230. This trader did it at $2. That's right near the bid. These were sold. Right. Um, and then, you know, these are perfectly clean when it's red here or pink, like this trader, 17 calls, 16 calls, 75. The bid was 75, 170. The bid was 170. I know they're selling these. You know, there's there's really no uh, uh, no other way around it right here. These are selling for sure. So I like to look at time and sales and also to, you know, my number one or number two thing. I like to see how the stock reacts. Right. If I see someone here under time and sales, let's say they buy 100 or they sell 150. I like to see if the stock goes straight down after they do it. Because remember, when you're trading an option, every option equals 100 shares of stock. So if they do 10 options or doing 1,000 shares, they do 100 options, 10,000 shares. Right. Just like if they were selling 10,000 shares, they're doing a thousand lot, 100,000 shares. I like to look at the ticker symbol, the stock chart. And see, after that big option order, let's say they buy or sell them, how's the stock react, right? Like this trader, when they sold uh, 500 here at 955, look what happened to the stock. Let's maximize this. 955 right here, stock went from 18 right down to 1720 in 10 minutes. That's an 80 cent move on a $17 stock in 10 minutes. So I know they sold those, you know, if I had time and sales up, I could see it too. But I know at that order right here at 955, they sold all those calls and the stock went straight down. So see how the stock reacts. Uh, I, I think that would be the, uh, uh, the thing. If the stock goes straight up and there's a volume spike, chances are they probably bought those calls, right? If the stock goes straight down, they probably sold calls or they bought puts. You, know, you have to use a little bit of discretion, right? You, you really do from from your um, from your trading, and you have to make that the decision is you know you have to decide. Hey, is that a is that a call sell? Is that a call buy? You know, what do I think? What am I leaning on? And those are some of the the uh, 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 the things that you can use there. So, like for example, you know. I've gotten good at it. It's kind of a, a of a uh, you know something. The more you do it, the more good you come at it here. But you know when I see this here, you know I'll, I'll post it. Hey, you know hey sees. You know, I sold way too soon here. But then I look and it says now they're at 70. They closed out their calls. You know they actually bought some puts in SeaWorld too. You know. Uh, you know, look look at time and sales. Look at the option volume. Look at the stock. How how it all reacts. Something that I like to always tell myself. I even write this down uh, a few times and, and and you know have it on my notepad here. Is I get bored during the afternoon, right? A lot of times I get bored. I used to sit on my computer all day till the close and watch every tick, but now. I've learned I should probably get out a little bit. So I now I go to the gym or I go to lunch, you know, in the afternoon. Why? Not because I, I like working out I and mean, I like food, but to get away. Because when I'm bored or when you're bored in trading, what happens? You do dumb stuff, right? I want to keep my loser small. I want to trade on good signals, good setups. I don't want to be bored. So when I'm bored, I don't want to get in trouble. And usually by the end of the day or near the end of the day, I look at my book and I say, why am I in this trade? What's the reason? Did I come up with this idea? If I did, it's usually probably wrong. 
<laughs> I just know that realistically. If I came up or I made the trade just because I thought, oh, look, banks are going up. Let me buy JP Morgan. <laughs> Did I come up with that idea? Yep. Did it work out? Probably not. What's my confidence level on each trade? Right? If I have a lot of confidence in a trade, maybe I'll up the size. If I have no confidence in a trade, maybe I'll put one lot, a one lot on, right? Maybe I'll risk 150 bucks, something small. Should I double down? The number one question people ask me, let's say I bought a stock at $10 and it goes to $9. Should I double down? Or let's say I bought an option at a dollar and now it's at 70 cents. Should I add? Probably not. I rarely ever double down and I rarely ever see institutional traders double down. It would take, you know, uh, the stock that it didn't move for a couple days and now they have that, you know, event or that news and I really think it's going to go up or something looks great. Um, that's one of the only reasons why I would ever double down or add. What happens if I close out the trade right now? It's my other question. If I close out the trade right now, because I'm satisfied, great. But if I close out the trade right now because I'm bored and the stock pops 10% tomorrow, would I be kicking myself in the behind? I always ask that. But Lance, if you close this out right before the close and it went up tomorrow, would you be kicking yourself in the butt? And if I say yes, then I'll keep it on. I don't care even if it goes down tomorrow. I understand it. Like Snapchat, I was long Snapchat calls ahead of earnings. Stock went down, you know, 20%. I lost every dime of my calls. But guess what? I fully accepted that it was a binary event on Snapchat. I personally thought it would go up. There, there comes the idea, did I come up with this trade? But if it would have went up a ton, I would have made a lot of money. If it went down, I knew I was going to lose about 300 bucks, and I did. But I was still, you know, happy that... You know, I accepted the terms. I really wasn't happy the stock went down, but I knew what I was getting myself into, so to speak. Questions. I know I kind of just took one, so I'll do a little thing of trivia here, uh, and then we'll go for the next part of the presentation. Really quick trivia question for all my Office fans. What is Michael Scott's middle name for a free course from Alpha Shark that is good for up to $500? Joe, no. Michael Scott. Regional uh, regional manager at Dunder Mifflin. What is Michael Scott's middle name? Someone's got to be an office fan in here. No, he said it. Gary, Ty Nugent, you got it. Joe, you were like literally a second late. Uh, Ty, I think it is, T-A-Y Nugent. Shoot me an email, Lance at Alpha Shark, and you went. I'll do one more just because I'm in a huge office uh, uh, kick right now. Although if you are a fan, don't watch season seven through nine. It has no Mike or eight and nine. They have no Michael Scott. What uh, what musical instrument does Kevin play in the office? Kevin? No. What musical instrument does Kevin play? Drum. Don Wilson. You got it right. Uh, Don, shoot me an email. And. Uh, uh, I'll give you, uh, or you get a free course too. And, uh, okay, that's it. Let's, let's move on right here. Backpipes. That was a good one. Okay. <laughs> that, that was really good. I, I might do some more trivia. I'm a big fan of trivia. I don't know. I get obsessed with it here. So there we go. We can see what uh, the uh, setup looks like, tracking options. Again, side by side. Very, very uh, 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 viewer friendly here when, when doing something like this. We see this is my volume shark indicator. This is an option chain of CRM. I could see how the stock reacts, uh, or I could see how the options react to the move in stock price here. So if you are trading, hey, there's a lot of volume. There's no volume. I don't want to trade on no volume. As we see, light volume die down. As stock goes up, heavier volume. Guess what happens to the options? They go higher. So we could do it side by side. Uh, let me Pardon, the, pardon me. Let me get my email address here in the chat. I think everyone should be able to see it here. Uh, let me type this really quick. Ah, can't expand this. There we go. Lance at alphashark.com. Or you could just shoot me a message on Twitter or something. I'll do, I'll do about five more trivia questions. I, I, I can't help it. I love trivia. Plus, I don't want uh, to... 
you know, I, I send the emails to Ralph to, to give away the courses. So uh, it doesn't take any work on my end. I already got, okay, perfect. Uh, thank you. Uh, is it Ty or Mr. Nugent? Uh, I got your email right now. Look at that, Michael Scott. What a beautiful email. Cool. Thank you. I actually have that. I actually have it on my phone on there. So my goal is to st find stocks where I have the advantage. I, I'm I'm odd, right? A lot of people would trade, you know, uh, you know, Baba and Mike, uh, Mike Micron and stuff like that. I, I trade them too, and I look at them all day. Don't get me wrong. Um, but sometimes they're a little difficult to trade. So I want to find names that still have good liquidity. Right? I'm not going to trade. Uh... Oh, really, Carrie? Sorry, Carrie. It's uh, it's a show. It's a really good show. I'll, I'll do it on something else. The new questions will be on something else. I, I, you're all right. It's really not fair for people to watch it. I still want to find a stock that has good volume, right? I know some. There's some of these like penny stocks and penny stock people out there who, you know, a thousand shares is going to move the market. I'm not talking about names like that. Um, you know, there, there, there. To be honest, I, I don't know how people trade those. I don't even know if they're real or on a real account. Uh, you know, I'm buying 10,000 shares of a 50 cent stock. I, hey, whatever. Uh, you know, a 10% move, it goes up five cents. But if the market is, you know, 12 cents wide, how the how in the heck am I going to move in there? So I feel like these unpopular names or names that are less known trend better and they're very... Uh, I feel like they're not as manipulated or as ran by the machines. A lot of times, too, you have to figure. If I'm looking at, uh, let's say, XLV, right? So we pull up XLV here. Let's pull XLV up on, like, the daily. Uh, it's 15. Let's pull it up on a daily. Perfect. So if I pull up XLV on a daily, I know that if I look at stocks that are in the XLV, like Pfizer, you know, um, something like Merck, if they're all having bearish charts or they're all going down, the XLV is going to go down, right? Or if the XLV is up, I know these stocks are going to go up. So there's really nothing, you know, when money flows into the ETFs, which a lot of money does, you know, they're very popular, they're going to affect the stocks, right? So let's say Pfizer has good news, but the XLV is down 2%. Chances are Pfizer is still going to get hit a little bit or it's not going to be up as much. I can look at stocks that aren't tied to the indexes or they don't have a huge weight to the indexes, right? You know, if I know if I trade Apple, it's going to move XLK. If I trade Google, it's going to move XLK, the technology ETF. But, you know, let's say XLK is down, uh, uh, you know, 2% today. I can look at a name like, you know, Wayfair or something that's in no ETF. And this stock still can be up, you know, 3% just because it's it, it has no index weighting or anything, right? It's it's in its own world, so to speak. And that's what I like. I want to find these names that are in their own world, that even if the indexes look like complete garbage, like the diamonds or something that are not trending well, I want to be able to find a stock, you know, even something like Square that has no real index weighting that can move on its own. Like, hey, I'll do my own thing. Screw everything else. These names are less likely to, or the market makers are less likely to uh, get the implied move correct, right? Let, let's say something like Square has has very low IV because they just had earnings and the stock moves up 6% in a day. Market makers are going to raise volatility. So if you're in options, options are going to go up. Therefore, it gives me the, a greater chance to double or triple or more of my money, right? If I want to double my money on let's say uh, Microsoft, I'm going to need some huge news and the stock to rip, and I'm going to have to buy a very risky out the money call probably. With something like you know Wayfair or Square or let's say Twitter or something like that, or let's say MGM or, 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 or uh, 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 Marriott Hotels or FireEye, I know I can, if they have a big move and the option prices are low or the implied volatility is low, you know, I could buy options for pretty cheap, and these names can have a potential for a big move higher or a short squeeze is what I like to find. I could find these stocks using the Volume Shark Scanner, and I could keep the names on my watch list. So what I do is I have a, a, a intraday scanner that takes into consideration volume, 
and combine with a trend study to form signals. So I know if a stock has red here, volume is less than the 200 day moving average. So that's on a 15 minute chart. If I see red, volume is low. So there's more supply than demand. I don't want to tra trade red bars, right? I don't want to trade light volume. When I see green, I know volume is elevated. So I know people are trading it. There's more demand. The stock can either move up quickly or down quickly. And then when I see these purple uh, down arrows, even on the scan, I know it's forming a short. And when I see a white uh, little box here, I know it's uh, triggering a long. So I can actually, instead of pulling up charts all day, I could just watch this and what I do to find these, uh, to find signals. So I can look and say, oh, look, RL and Renaissance are going down. And I can look at something like double uh, L is going up. Right, it's very easy for me to uh, uh, to follow without actually pulling up a thousand. Uh, it's of the stock. It's of the stock. So what it is, Chris, is taking the 200-day uh, uh, volume average, and if volume is exceeding that, it produces a green bar. If volume is uh, lower than the 200-day volume average, it produces a red bar. Richie asks a good question. How do you determine IV was low for Square? So let's look at that actually. So we can look at square, and another thing with the volume shark indicator is I actually have down here on the left implied volatility around 47%. We look at square. Da, 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 da. I think it does the May. So we had at at the start of the day, volatility in square was around 47%. Now it's around 52%. So volatility actually went up as the stock price went up here in square. Because I can look at that and look at the, I could actually look down below and look at, uh, I think it was, tell me the option stats. Will it here? Yeah, here we are. Current 52-week uh, IV percentage, 84%. 84%, so that's probably going to be right around an earnings event. And I could look at square two and also say, after earnings, what happens to implied volatility? It gets crushed. So usually a stock right after it reports earnings, usually the day after or two, volatility will be very, very low. Also too, Richie, what you can do is, you know, let's say you don't want the volume shark indicator, you don't want to see that there. You could actually go into your platform and type in implied volatility and then add it as a lower study or you could add it as a study. And you can actually look at a, a line of implied volatility. So here in Square, you'll see, you know, and this is for all stocks, uh, you know, as well. And to the earnings event, implied volatility is high, right? Because there's a lot of uncertainty of the earnings event, so options are expensive. And then once you get to post earnings, volatility goes down. So right here at 47% IV, I consider that very, very cheap volatility or very, very cheap option prices. So the market makers aren't expecting a huge move because they already had earnings and Square actually didn't even hardly move on earnings. If you look at the other prior quarter, implied volatility is way up here around, what were we, about 65%. What happened after earnings? Dropped out very, very low. Uh, so you can actually look at a history again, high implied volatility here, after earnings, volatility cheap. Usually after a few days or a couple days after the earnings event, implied volatility gets crushed. Therefore, option prices go lower. That's why often you'll see a stock come out with earnings. And even though it's up, let's say it's within the market maker's implied move, the option prices will actually go down because it's not exceeding that market maker's move. So the market makers were already implying that big of a move. If it doesn't exceed it, the option buyers do not make money. They can actually lose money, which is, you know, another fun fact uh, to learn because oftentimes I see people say, oh, Intel beat earnings. The stock's up, you know, 4%. Well, by the time the options got opened, the stock was only up 2% and the market makers were implying, you know, a 4.5% move. Uh so is so if it if it is that IV low during earnings, that's likely a chance that the market will move it before move it up that the market will move it above after earnings. So if it is so if it so if so it is that if uh, IV is low during earnings. Yeah, if 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 a name has low implied volatility, there's less likely it's going to have a big move. 
uh, if it has high implied volatility, they're gonna, the market makers are expecting a big move. It could be a drug catalyst, it could be an earnings event, it could be a news event, um, something like that where implied volatility is gonna be high. It's actually, uh, oh, is first solar down, Phil? Did SunPower report, by the way? I actually have, um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll do it later here. Is it really? I hope it's down like $10 tomorrow. <laughs> That's just greedy, I know. <laughs> Torrible and greedy. Uh, I don't think first solar print's real. Oh, you are right. Sun power did miss. Ooh, joy. Eh, it didn't miss a lot, though. 5, 8, 3, 30. Okay, let's move on. Yeah, I see that. It needs to go to like $2. Or it needs to go to like $62. How does the intraday scanner work? Yeah, Mo I see a monster down. That's good. Yeah. E-Trade has a feature. So, it, Does anyone have E-Trade Pro or E-Trade? It, it's a very cool platform, I must admit. I don't use it. I've, I've used it. I've seen it a few times. It's a very cool platform. And I know I'm taking long, so I'll get this quick and we'll get some more trivia. E-Trade has a neat feature scanning stocks intraday. Right, I have no affiliation with E-Trade. I just think with, I thought it was cool. That are moving higher or lower. I found the scanner useful over about a year ago. In fact, it was the coolest scanner I ever came across. Right, it, let's say a stock was moving up, it would flash on your scanner. So let's say MRO was going up on volume, it would just flash MRO. Like here's a normal watch list. It would just flash like MRO, 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 MRO. If the stock was going up and it was cool, so then you could just type in the stock and buy it or trade it. And if a stock was going down, it would be red or it had like a, a down stock one. Let's say like um, Apple was getting hit on volume. It would flash Apple, Apple, Apple. So you could type in Apple and trade it. It was the coolest thing I thought in the world. And I was like, wow, this is so cool. Like, why doesn't Think or Swim have this? You know, I, I kept saying that. It's like, why don't they do this? So I reached out to them. I said, hey, E-Trade has this really cool scan. Can you guys do it? They said, no, we don't do real time. Uh, it would have to be a scan after you know, after the fact. And I was like, well, after the fact, it's too late. You know, I don't, I don't want nothing like that. I want it real time. I couldn't pick up real data and stuff like that, or it would be delayed. It was, it was horrible. So I hired a programmer, uh, it actually trades too, who actually dug up the code and created a real time intraday scan. So again, we talked about green volume accelerating, red volume declining, white a buy signals triggered, purple sell signals triggered. Also, there's a new stock scanner I came out with. It's basically a trend study. When a name breaks um, uh, the 20 day uh, moving average and a couple other moving averages combined with volume exceeding the 200 day volume average, um, I will actually get a, 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 a scan for swing trades. It's on a daily chart. Because what I look for in charts is volume provides liquidity, price discovery, supply and demand. What happens if you're trading stocks, options, or futures? It creates one thing, opportunity. So if people don't know, I'll try to get this out quick, is it's using a study of volume average. So there's the 50-day volume average, the 200-day volume average. Oftentimes you'll hear of the 50-day and 200-day moving averages. What people don't consider is volume also has averages too. If a stock is trending well, right, and it's moving and it has elevated volume, it's going to continue normally to continue moving in that direction. It's just, just like the moving averages, look back period. When volume is elevated above its average, it creates demand. What I mean by that is, remember the whole Bitcoin craze with names like Riot and stuff? Remember all that shebang, shebang? Well, what happened to Riot now? I have no, I don't even know where it's at. Now, apparently it's at 740. But you can see here, as Riot started moving up, look at all this volume. Volume just exceeded the normal average of it. It went straight to the moon. And as it started to go down, and you can look at how small the candles are. No one gives a crap about it anymore, right? So that's what I wanted to find. I wanted to find a stock that is breaking out on volume before kind of everyone else finds out it's breaking out on volume. You know, like Xnet here, it had their little Bitcoin craze, went to the moon here on volume. And now that no one cares about it, it has no volume here and it just goes straight down, right? You know, we could probably look at so many of these like Bitcoin or stocks that got volume out of nowhere. Uh, you know, Grow was like another one, but they went up on tons of volume. They had a huge short squeeze and everyone wanted to trade them. Now no one wants to touch the darn things, right? So those were some of the uh, uh, 
uh, names here, you know, like Fuel Cell, remember that name? Now no one's even trading it anymore. Uh, that that had this big move. There was so much demand. Everyone was trading it and everyone wanted it. So it increases implied volatility, which is bullish for demand or decreased price or liquidation for forced selling for bearish demand. Because what happens when a stock goes up, the shorts get squeezed, people have to buy, uh, they have to cover their shorts at any cost. The broker will actually execute the order for them or if traders or investors or funds will buy at any price because they feel like they have to own the stock. Or, you know, if you're caught on the wrong side of it, they have to sell the stock at any price. Hopefully no one's experienced that. But, you know, uh, if you have, you know what it's like. It sucks because you have no control. That's actually what's happening at TripAdvisor. All the shorts are having to cover. So even as the market goes on, it continues to go up. Ah, well, here we go. Uh, actually... We don't need to know about the background here too much. So volume can happen for a couple different reasons. Earnings, news, upgrade, technical breakout. Most of this is what I like to look at in trading. You know, I want to see if there's a news event, a uh, technical breakout, could be an earnings, stuff like that. All this really helps trading be stress-free because if I'm trading the same names over and over again, like Microsoft, I know there's going to be no news. If the Nasdaq's up 2% tomorrow, Microsoft's going to be up you know, probably two to 4%. It's going to be up a lot. But if, let's say the Nasdaq's flat, chances are Microsoft's going to be flat, right? I've, I've, I, that's no use for me right there. I don't, I don't have to, you know, be dependent on the overall market. That's what I want. So I also have a custom ATR uh, study included to help, hey, what's the average true range of the stock? And that's looking at about a five-day period back. The last thing was a trend study. So I want to look at volume over the 200-day uh, volume average price expansion, and I included two rapid moving averages in there. Can't tell people what they are, but you can see in the code and you can actually edit them. Because what I wanted to do is I don't want to say, hey, you know, it says buy a stock at this price and the stock goes above the price and I never bought it and now I'm out the trade or I move on. I wanted to have multiple signals. So here like on Caterpillar, this is it for trading view, produces a long, produces a long, produces a long, produces a long. You know, if I missed out here when the price went up, no biggie. Uh, this was actually ripple, short, 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 first long, or long, 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 uh, right there. What happened was, you know, people started getting mad because they say, Lance, you know, you have a signal and I missed out, and when do I get in? Um, there's multiple entry points, is, you know, kind of what I want to get to. As long as volume moves up and the, and the stock or the underlying is trending, you know, there's multiple. Uh, opportunities to get in. Like I always say, I usually buy at the high and then I buy it higher, right? I know I'm not going to get the low like here on Freeport. I know I wasn't going to buy it at $14. It'd be unrealistically, but I did buy it at 17. I bought it at 16, I bought it at 17 and a half a few times. And I kept buying calls on the move. Uh, you know, and here's, you know, I say, you know, I wish I, I would have just bought it and held on forever, but I did. I was in and out of it, but it was still very stress-free here. Some of you may have the uh, dynamic moving uh, uh, dynamic trend study too. It looks amazing with that as well. So what does the volume chart indicator do? Helps find trending stocks that are actually moving for day and swing trades, entries and exit positions. It actually highlights them. And uh, what's actually really good people like is it actually gives you the target price and a stop price on the upper left-hand study, which is very cool. Because then you don't have to really think about it. Again, I don't want to think in trading. I'm not the smartest trader in the world. You know, I don't have 10 PhDs from Harvard. You know, I, I just don't. You know, trading is you have to learn and focusing on education is very important, I feel like. So it's used, using a tested approach to be on the right side of the trend. And it really eliminates, especially with the watch list scanner, you know, you don't have to stare at charts all day. Uh, you know, now I look at about 10 charts a day and that's it. You know, I got, I work out of my laptop a lot. And that's all I really need. You know, I don't need to have, you know, five monitors to stare at every day. Russell, uh, you know, mess, mess, mentioned this, you know, uh, nearly a couple of weeks after he got, he says, you know, Lance, it removes the need for me to stare at charts all day. Um, Chris traded it really good. I mean, I granted the market was trending great back then is, uh, you know, trading names like Tesla, Netflix, EA, CRM, Intel, and uh, 
Andrew H actually used it to catch a big bounce in Bitcoin. I think when it was around like 7,800, he actually thought he was kind of crazy because, well, some of the Bitcoin traders are crazy out there. And what I do have here is a special. You get a free month of the options trading room with it. And we'll get to all the trivia here too. Is it's $299. It's usually a thousand bucks on the website. It's alphashark.com backslash vshark. Is you get the scanner. Um, yeah, Richard, we'll get we'll get back to that too for sure. Uh, you get the scanner for TradeStation and Thinkorswim. The indicator you get for Thinkorswim, TradeStation, and TradingView. You get the watch list scanner and you get the new stock scanner for swing trading. Um, for trading view, it's pretty cool because it will work on cryptos or I know a lot of people have been using trading view for charts. So you get it for all three platforms. You own it. You could go and edit the code. You know, I, I tell people all the time, you could go edit the code in here. You know, if you want, you can see everything that's in it. If you want to uh, edit some of the uh, studies, you can, or the colors, you can. If you want to share it with your friend or share it across multiple machines, you can. It's a one-time purchase for $2.99. It was created by an award-winning programmer for TradeStation. Uh, it does think or swim too, and actually made it for TradingView. You get alerts, so it, it alerts you when a long or short is triggered on the upper left-hand side with a bell. Uh, it's pretty... Uh, pretty complete of an indicator and again it's only a one time uh, uh, purchase and you own it you know the, all the updates are free I came out with a couple updates yeah um, all the updates are free and if you have questions I, I include tutorials and videos and everything like that for it as well uh, so you don't have to uh, you don't have to uh, you know think so much and you also get to uh, Again, you get a free month of the options of the trading room, which we trade options and stocks for free, which is usually about, I think it's $99 or $200 uh, in itself. So basically, you're getting the indicator for like 100 bucks. And I'm having mentoring next week uh, for the indicator. So if you do have questions, you go to mentoring or you can just go in the trading room and ask me uh, firsthand right there. Uh, can you show the earlier screen for the criteria of the scan? Yeah. And... Oh, also, too, if you have questions, Lance at Alpha Shark. So we can look at that. Um, let's pull it up here. So for the scan, what it is doing, it's taking in the 200-day the volume average, price expansion from two rapid moving averages, especially um, for the day trade scan. Actually, the for the daily time frame, it actually takes into consideration another uh, trend study as well, which I hide it. But if you want, you could display it on your charts too. And for the, uh, let's put it up here. Here we go. Um, for the intraday scan, which is this, this scanner right here with the green, red, purple, and white uh, colors, is it's taking into the 15, or you could set it to the five minute uh, candles. If volume is, volume is accelerating, you have a green bar down below, volume is decelerating. A very light volume, you have a red bar below. Purple down arrow, it's producing a short signal. Green up, or pardon me, white up arrow, it's producing a long signal. So you'll see actually a white box, purple box, red box, or green box here. And there's uh, what it is, uh, a little bit of text right there. And it's real intratime scan. So it's not, uh, you know, it's not delayed or after the fact or after the candle closes. This flashes real time as the market moves you know from green to red to white to purple so it's a real time scan um so hopefully that helps out richie if you have any more sp specific questions feel free to ask too let's get to a thing of trivia and we won't use the office because uh well you know not everyone follows the office here uh, let's use a question is, ah, I got it. What Thor? Yeah, I was going right, to, let's, let's use, um, the Avengers movie, right? Who's seen the, the Avengers infinity war? Maybe someone has seen that. And I'll, I'll get to a couple other questions too. Um, what actor 
plays. Actually, it's not really. Well, we'll use what actor plays Iron Man. It's a pretty simple question. Actually, do I have my uh, question box? Uh, Ty, you can't get it twice. Uh, David, yeah, David, David, who are? Got it right, Rob, Rob Downey Jr. here. All right, we'll get a couple more questions here, too. Uh, what is... Uh, what is the lowest yeah, take care you you know you know the, you know what they usually are here um <laughs> what is the southernmost key in uh uh the florida keys very popular uh yeah i, I got you don uh simon i feel like you always get them rest so i'll give it to to uh I'll give it to Joe Kerner and Simon Reed, Key West. Marathon's actually up north. I was there the other week. So Joe Corner, I think I got it right, and Simon, shoot me an email. And we'll also do um, – ah, uh, what's another good question here? Uh, let's do – who is the CEO of Microsoft? Yeah, and we'll, we'll look at Nagpin's uh, question here, too. Now, Rick Froome, uh, Sanjay Nadella. Rick Froome, you got it right. So let's actually pull it up for trading view. Really good question here. I, I actually had it up, too. Darn it, Lance. You know, I ha so I have it. Uh, yeah, Sanjay Nadella, Rick Froome got it correctly. So for trading view... So what I'm doing too, just, you know, I, I don't just have these indicators and not use them and stuff like that. Um, just to show everyone what I'm doing here. So this is what it looks like for trading view, which you can use it for, you know, uh, the cryptos too. So for trading view is this, I actually have it for trading view. This is what it looks like for the screenshot, but I have it here to where. I have the pine editor. Uh, let me see here. Where I have it back tested as a study. And I really just put away the code. Ah, darn it. So I have it here on trading view. So you know you do pine editor for all the trading view. Ah, strategy tester. There we go. I have it here for trading view that is actually an automated um study here to where it actually has the total amount of trades probability net profit as a, an automated system now I'm not, this isn't it isn't automated done for sale or anything yet but what I am doing is back testing it for an automated system here for trading view so this is actually the automated system which no one really has seen but me and the programmer here to where I actually execute trades um, on TradingView because TradingView has a pretty easy uh, software to use uh, for it. And then, um, you know, we can look at something like, I don't know, give me any stock, maybe Bob or something. And then let me see what it, yeah, that's why it looks like that. So let's, uh, let me actually remove the automated study for it and actually show you what it looks like without the uh, automated study, if that works. But yeah, it's a uh, insert indicator, and it's invite only scripts. There we go. Let's use Baba on the daily. Oh, you know what? I actually have two. I actually have these magnified. Uh, not on this one. So like here, I wish I could show you the magnified. Ah, yeah, they're a little magnified. So here's like Baba here on the daily. It's a little hard to see just because I haven't. Um, this is the older one that I have here. Baba here, you see how he has these up triangles here for longs. You have volume down below. Um, you know, we can pull up another stock. I don't know what's another stock out there. Uh, Tiva. Tiva's got no signal here. 
Uh, what about Apple? Apple here, we have, so here's a little bit better view, like short, 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 long, 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 long. Uh, that's what it looks like for trading view. Uh, so this trading view, NAGPEN doesn't have a scanner uh, feature from my understanding. So there's no scanner feature for trading view. But what you can do is use the Thinkorswim or Trade Station version scanner. Trade Station uses uh, uh, what's the scanner? It uses uh, some hot one. Uh, God, TradingView has like their main one, but it, the TradingView scanner, Thinkorswim scanner, no scanner for TradingView. But again, yeah, radar screen. That's it. Um, but you know, again, if you when you buy it, you get. Trading view, thinkorswim, scanners, and uh, trade station. You get all of them basically. You know, it's not like, hey, Lance, sh sh give me the trade station or trading view version. You get all of it. You get all the, uh, you get the whole package zip file with everything into once. That's why I always say, I don't care. You can share it. You know, go share it with your neighbor or your other machine or your friend. You know, you 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 know, you own it. You do whatever you want with it. And I keep saying that because you know, I got it set up on three different machines. You know, uh, why, why would you, you know, why would you not, you know, like my buddy over there, I said, here, here's the code, copy and paste. I shared it with him. You know, it's yours. You own it. You do whatever you want with it. So hopefully this helps. Uh, if you have any questions, shoot me an email. Everyone who got a free course, right. Or, uh, 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 uh yeah, my Florida trivia, right. Um, shoot me an email, What the email will, you know, I'll answer emails, uh, probably tomorrow morning, tomorrow afternoon. And then for the trivia winners, uh, Raf at Alpha Shark will give you, uh, uh, you know, the course to pick from, stuff like that. You can email me, Lance at Alpha Shark, or just shoot me a PM on Twitter. I have it on my phone, so I'm always on it too. Uh, can you share your code with me? Uh, <laughs> yeah, Carrie, if you have it for Trading View, um, also, or if you if you have it, just shoot me an email with, you know, hey, Lance purchased it, and um, Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you should already have it. But yeah, send me an email. I'll get it to you. All, you, all you'll do is... Uh, I know at first we were sharing it, and then we... Um, uh, um, we were sharing it on Trading View, and now I think you just copy and paste the code. So, uh, this note. Hey, Lance, can I email you regarding the coder? Yeah. Uh, I have a pro. Yeah, shoot me an email, Joe. Seventy-seven. I would say a lot of uh, the coders are way smarter than I am. My coding's horrible. Um, uh, but Brian is like an awesome programmer who who does stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. Always open. Shoot me an email. That's at alphashark.com or on Twitter. All right. I think I'm going to wrap it up here, everyone. That's my email, alphashark.com backslash vshark. Uh, and then it takes you to the Infusionsoft if you uh, want it, a link like that. Yeah, that's what the link looks like. And then you just put in your info and then you get it. Uh, uh, Ralph sends it to you tomorrow morning. Thanks, everyone. And this pool, it says recorded, right? Yeah.